Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm coming at you with another Godzilla review, monster, march, monster, madness, mania, mag... Magnificent, extravagant, I don't know. Anyway, whatever you want to call it. And today, we are going to be talking about Destroy All Monsters, which in addition to the Criterion set, I have the older Blu-ray, and I'll cover that, uh, the reason why I have this in a minute here. But um, I quite enjoyed this movie. I have seen this one before. I do remember it liking it the first time I saw it, and I still like it today. Um, a lot of people consider this to be one of the last really good Godzilla movies in the original Showa era. It is a fan favorite amongst many people, and I can see why. And unfortunately, it is the last one to have the original special effects guy in charge, the original producer, and the original uh, music composer. And one thing I have forgotten to mention throughout these Godzilla movies is I have really liked the music so far in these films. Um, again, I keep forgetting to say that. But yes, uh, I can see why this is a fan favorite. I can see why that this is highly regarded in the Godzilla community. I enjoyed the movie myself quite a bit. It is a pretty strong uh, entry. It is a pretty strong Godzilla film in my opinion, and I know a lot of other people share that opinion, which is really cool. But before we jump into this, as always, if anyone would like to send in a paid request, you may do that down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, if anyone is interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Excuse me. <clears throat> Damn. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell's going on with my voice. Uh, <clears throat> Damn. It does motivate me. I'm dying. I'm, so, I'm so excited to talk about this movie. I, I, I can't speak. It just beyond words. <laughs> it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it is a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy. Just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. But destroy all monsters. This is really fun. Now, the only gripe that I have with it is I do wish, and I know I've said this in previous reviews, um, I do wish that it had more of the monsters, um, considering the fact that they looked at this as kind of, it might have been the last Godzilla movie. So they put kind of everybody in there. And I do wish that there was more of of the creatures. I do wish there was more of the monsters in there because I look at it this way. If it was going to be your last movie, wouldn't you want to go all out and just focus as much as you can on them and try to just have them do their thing throughout the entire movie? You know, I get it. I get where they're coming from. Maybe time did not allocate for that. Maybe the budget didn't allocate for that, but, uh, it would have been nice, but that would be my only complaint. Everything else, I really like. I do really like the plot to this one. So the plot of the film is, in the American version, it's 1999. In the Japanese version, they just say the, the end of the 20th century. But in 1999, world, world peace has been achieved. They have sent the monsters to their own island, which is called Monster Land. In this version, I know in some of the later Godzilla movies, they renamed it to Monster Island. But all the monsters are sent there. They're living happy. They cannot leave the island. And they, <clears throat> these aliens come in 
and capture the monsters and brainwash them to start attacking the cities all over the world. So the humans have to get together, which is like this defense force all over the world, and try to put a stop to this. Of course, the monsters are free from it. They go to Mount Fiji where the aliens are hiding. King Ghidorah shows up, so they all team up together to fight King Ghidorah because at this point in the franchise, he was the bad guy. He was the, the lead villain until a couple few movies down the road, Mecha Godzilla came in and he kind of became the head honcho of sorts, which is my honestly my favorite, but of the villains, but we'll get to that a little bit down the road. We have a couple of few movies to get to before we get to that, so I am jumping the gun here. But I do like the plot. Again, I liked how it was the humans versus the aliens. I thought that was really cool. I liked how they got more into the sci-fi aspect of it, you know, by by bringing aliens back into the mix, because... Uh, Astro Monster, couldn't think of the name of it. Invasion of Astro Monster had featured that, but that was, at this point, the only other Godzilla movie that had aliens in it. And I know some of the later ones do. Some of the ones I've reviewed before had them, which is cool. And again, it's science fiction. You can throw aliens into Godzilla, and it it won't really matter. It, It won't really ruin anything. Uh, but I did really like that, and I do like the the human characters quite a bit in this. I like the aliens as well. They were the bad guys. I like the action scenes where they're shooting, like the guy gets shot in the head, and it's like a blood squib in 1968, and it's fucking crazy. That's when this came out, right? Yeah, 68. See, I know stuff. I know things. Um, so that was all really cool. I really like that. I loved how they put as many monsters as they could in this. Now, originally, I was reading that Toho wanted to put every single character that they had in the movie. They wanted to put King Kong in there, but the rights to that character that they had expired, so they couldn't do it. And there were a few other characters that they wanted to throw in. It just didn't happen. So... Because the the script changed and the budget got smaller, so they were only allotted a certain number of characters. But it would have been cool if King Kong popped in there, you know, to have a rematch with Godzilla. But unfortunately, we never got to see that in the the Japanese movies. The new one that's coming out later this month, I don't give a shit. Who cares? I'll probably watch it to rant on it, but that'd be about it. Or if it was a paid request. But I do like how they got pretty much all of the the characters in this. So, And that's what I love about these Blu-rays. They actually have all the monsters. So you have Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Rodan, Gorgosaurus. Anguirus comes back, which is cool. Uh, Kumanga, which is the spider creature from the previous movie. Manda. Uh, Manila, a.k.a. Baby Godzilla, as I call him. Baragon and Varen, who are from other movies that uh, Toho had. Uh, but they're all in here, which is cool. I, and again, I loved how they were on their own island. They were just chilling, hanging out, and then they get brainwashed by aliens. So they, they get hypnotized and turn bad, but then they turn back to good, which is cool. And then they do have a final showdown with King Ghidorah. But again, like I said, I do wish that we got to see more of the monsters, more of the characters that we all love. Because again, this potentially was going to be the last Godzilla film because the grosses had been going down and and the popularity had kind of wore off. And they were running out of ideas at this point and they were thinking, well, you know, if we are going to not do this anymore, why don't we try to put them all together and save you more at the room store? Again, I'm dating myself with my references because I am 31 years old and that's what I do. <laughs> um, but, I mean, other than that nitpick, I... I really liked it. Again, I I loved that they got all the characters in there as much as they could, all the suits. I really liked the last shot when the humans are flying over the island and they're all, all the monsters are there and they're happy and it was just cool. And again, if this would have been 
the last Godzilla movie, that would have been a great way to end it. That would have been a great shot. Just they're all there and they're smiling and, oh, look, they're going to be okay. They're all in their little area and they're not going to hurt anybody. But of course, you know, that didn't happen. You know, money was made and more movies were made. And here we are 70 years later still talking about this, which is cool. I really like the production design. Again, all these movies so far have been well shot. I guess they figured if this is going to be the last one, I know I keep going back to this, but it's, it is true. If, if this is going to be our last go at this, let's just make it the best we can. And I think they kind of went out all, all the way with the production design, the model work. I really like in this. Everything looks really nice and pretty. I like all the the Earth Defense Force stuff, all the alien stuff, they really took their time and they really put their their best foot forward and their all their energy and, and money and everything to really make this look good and to really make this special and have it work. Because again, you know, if if we say goodbye here, we're good. We got it. We're good. This is what people are going to walk away from and, and be happy about it, which is always the goal, like they say in wrestling. Send them home happy. But I do really like, again, the, the way that they shot this and the way it looks. Again, the music, I know I haven't really said that in a lot of these reviews, but I do love the music in, in the Godzilla movies. They did do, um, I think, Mondo <clears throat> did it. There's a vinyl box set out of all the uh, the Showa films, but it's went out of print, I think, immediately because they sold out. Sorry, and it is pretty pretty hard to come by at this point, but maybe one day down the road I will get it in the collection. Um, but again, I I really, really like this film. Again, watching it a couple of few years ago for the first time, <clears throat> damn, and then watching it again was really fun. Now, like I said, I do have the Criterion Blu-ray, but I also have this Blu-ray. This was put out by Tokyo Shock. Um, this is the original Blu-ray release that has features. Um, on the back here, it only says it has a commentary. It actually has a lot more than that. What had happened was they put this out and they did not get the clearance for the extra features, but they put them out anyway. When they found out about it, they recalled the copies that were out there. They reissued it, I think, with no extra features. But this is pretty hard to come by now. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I do have this original uh, Blu-ray release because, again, the features that are on here, number one, were never supposed to come out. Number two, they are different from the ones that are on the Criterion set. So if you are a completist or you really like this film like I do or, or you're just a Godzilla fan or what have you, try to track this one down. Don't pay an arm and a leg for it. Shop around because it is worth to have because it has different extra features, which is cool. Um. But yes, at the end of the day, and this does have the English and Japanese dubs on here, which is cool. Same with, <coughs> god damn, I'm so sorry. Same with the Criterion set. I don't know what is going on. I recorded two other videos today and did not have any vocal problems. Now all of a sudden I do. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Uh, the Criterion set actually does have the English and the Japanese dubs for this movie. Again, I don't know why they didn't have the English dubs for all the Godzilla movies, but it is what it is. It's too late now because that set's been out for a while, but not only does that Blu-ray have both dubs, this Blu-ray has both dubs as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I really like this movie. Um, I would definitely put this among my favorites. If we're talking the Showa era so far, I'd probably put the original Godzilla at number one, this at number two, and then maybe Invasion of Astro Monster. Uh, no, Son of Godzilla would be three, then Invasion of Astro Monster would be four, and then maybe like Mothra versus Godzilla at five, 
uh, Godzilla raids again at six, and then the other two, Ibra and King Ghidorah, eh, throw them out. Anyway, but that's just so far. Of course, we have many more movies to go, not just in the Showa era, but in general. But we're going to keep doing it. We're going to try to get through it as uh, good as we can in this month. I'm sure we can knock out probably all of them. We'll see what happens. But next up, <clears throat> because... It was working, and they still made them. There is another... God, there. Well, there's many more. Um, but I believe the next one... I should know this like off the top of my head, but I don't. But I believe the next one is All Monsters Attack. It is. All Monsters Attack, which came out the next year. So we will be covering that in the next video so that'll be soon ish or something i don't know anyway <laughs> but i hope that you guys enjoyed my review of destroy all monsters again definitely one of the better of the showa era films i know it's among a lot of people's favorite godzilla movies which is cool myself included and we'll talk to you later